right, um, I think I'm ready. I'm finally ready to share the true story. My husband and I have been going through infertility for five years now. And these paintings are a direct reflection of that journey. The journey really began when I was very little. I've always wanted to be a mom. Um, I just, if you'd ask me what I want to be when I grew up, I, I'd say be a mama. You know, ask me, ask me my five year, 10 year goal. My first thought would be, I want to have kids, but I thought, you know, maybe that's not always the most acceptable answer or people just always think you should do something else more ambitious or something. But to me, that was the most wonderful thing I could do with my life. All right, so um, editing Noel here. Um, I just want to also say that um, this might have been a little bit of an exaggeration. I also have always dreamt of being an artist and a wife, which I am so incredibly thankful for. I, I have the best husband and I have so much gratitude that I'm able to do my painting career as well. So I just wanted to put that in there too, um, just to kind of balance out the, the exaggeration motherhood but also these other dreams were pretty equally strong too so I just thought I would say that so and it just was a very deep longing from the time I was really little and I've always just dreamt of that so um you know things were going fine I, I got married all right uh, editing Noel here again um yeah that more, way more than going fine I was so happy like I just want to say um, just being able to get married and, um, to, to Isaac and just how wonderful he is and just how special um, our relationship and our marriage and, and I, I got married at a decent age and I was just so excited to begin our journey and I have the most wonderful spouse to do that with I was just stoked and I just never suspected that there would be an issue you just don't sometimes you just get completely blindsided by this I remember the first year was the hardest. It felt like sand going straight through my hands. Like if you're trying to hold sand, it just it just falls straight on through the fingers. Like you can't you can't hold it. Those dreams just sifting away. It was so scary. Every month, I didn't think it would take long, but when after I went month after month, I just was starting to realize, wow, there, there actually could be a problem and I'm not ready for this. <laughs> I'm not ready. It was honestly like one of the worst things that I could personally think of to happen to me. Not being able to have children is, is like an eternal thing that this world, you know, doesn't really compare. <laughs> yeah, it, it's unlike other kinds of problems. I know there's so many problems and I can't, you can't, you can't really compare because, you know, pain is pain and, and, and I believe that so deeply. But for me at the time, it was heartbreaking. And during that time, I created this painting right here. The title is Seed of Hope. You know, this painting really reflects those emotions, those strong emotions of, oh no, like, is this actually happening? I, I don't have control over this. You see the moon cycles every month going by, time passing. You see her sitting on a flower bud. And when I was painting it, I was trying to paint something hopeful. I wanted her to be sitting on a flower bud that's about to bloom. And and I just wanted to believe that for myself, that I would bloom into a mother. And it was wild because I was making it and I realized that the seed bud wasn't a seed bud, it was, or actually, sorry, it was a seed bud. That's that's the thing is I thought it was a flower bud about to bloom, but it was actually, happened to be a dead flower, one that the petals had already fallen off. But I go outside and my friend happened to give me this, this plant, the exact plant that I was painting, and she didn't even know that at the time. She just showed up at my door with it. And I go out and I grab one of the, the dead flowers and I bring it in and I just tip it and the seeds come pouring out. That was, um, that was over four years ago. 
Hey there, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do this, but I'm, um, I just decided I'd like to share the poem that I wrote with this painting, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, read that to you guys now. This is called Seed of Life, May 27, 2019. How many hours and how many more days? These jolting emotions too much. I sit here and ponder when my flower will bloom. Motherhood so far from my grasp, even though dreamt from since I could walk. Memories of me and my dolls flash my mind and I sit there further in fret and dismay. Oh, the pain, it's too much. So I cry. I then look below me and observe what I'm on and it's no flower about to bloom in the day, but a dead one who's already seen its last one in the sun. I take it as a sign and believe for a bit that all hope is gone and that my womb is dead too. So depressing, I ponder, this just cannot be. Then as I try to fix things myself and paint this dead thing a proper flower bud, something sparks in my mind that this is no mistake of mine. The Lord knew it and did it on purpose. This thing that I sit on is the carrier of seed, the future of millions of generations to come, given some water and nurture and love. I run outside to see for myself the dead poppy outside the front door, that this very bud I sit on is the one full of life. I hold it and tip it and seeds come pouring out. I realize and believe that one day I too will be a mother and with no evidence now, those tiny seeds like my own will become my future and I'll look back on these days with a grin. So for now, I will sit here and smile above and be thankful for all the blessings to come. Thank you. And um, to this day, it's been something I've held on as a symbol of hope and um, that, you know, it's a symbol that I am, I, I do have life in me and that whether or not it will result in a child, I there's, there's life that will come, there's beauty that will come from the pain. Even when the, the, the flower petals are gone, um, it's still beautiful and it's not, it's not dead. Yeah, this painting really reflects um, that early stage of my journey and just going through those intense emotions and just reflected in the sky where I did the light and the strong colors and yeah. So um, a lot of people ask, you know, are these girls me? And um, I oftentimes say no, but um, they absolutely are. <laughs> They absolutely are. I don't. I don't want to just paint myself all the time, of course. But yeah, they they are definitely a reflection of me. I don't. I don't purposely make them me, but you know what I mean. But I want them to actually for people to see themselves in them. I want people to see my art and see themselves reflected and get inspired that there is more and there is hope and there is beauty. So that's the story with this painting that I have not publicly shared until now. <sighs> Let's go on to the other ones. <laughs> so a little bit later, um, my husband and I, we reached our one year, which after one year of trying is considered the time where you can start look, um, talking to doctors and seeing if they, they can figure out what's going on. And technically that's the time that you're diagnosed with an infertility diagnosis. And so it was terrifying going in and for the first time just recognizing that yeah we we do have a problem it's just this sense of like like lack of control again you don't have you just don't have control it's just this personal area of your life that is being kind of like here we are it's just like it's, it's heartbreaking but during that time i was creating this painting right here which to this day i consider to be my favorite painting i normally wear a necklace of it i forgot to put it on for this video this painting is titled Expectancy. And yes, the title does represent thinking about like expectant and expectant normally means like you're expecting a child or like you're expecting something like you know it's gonna come. But to me, the word expectancy means anticipating that it will, but you don't know when and you don't know how. And it's a state of active rest. It's a state of you're resting and believing that it's gonna happen. And um, the official Google definition of expectancy is the quality or state of expecting, expectation, anticipatory belief or desire. 
and you see this woman in the water and she's having to stay afloat. She's having to stay above the water, not sink, but you can also see she's not completely, she's not completely doing well. I purposely made her skin slightly bluish and grayish tone to the, so that it could reflect how I was feeling. I was feeling like a part of me was dying and these dreams were just slowly going away. And um, I, you know, I also symbolized uh, putting the, the lilac flower in there and talking about life and putting the full moon, which to me, the moons represent um, definitely femininity and just so much more spiritually speaking. They represent our reflection of the Lord. The moon does not create its own light, um, but the moon reflects the light of the sun. So it's very much like a hope thing where I believe that I'm called to be the light of the world. And, and as Christians, we're supposed to be that light. And so um, in this painting, I, um, you know, I, I created it and it was incredibly uh, soothing to put that out because I was able to really express like how I was feeling in the imagery and the cool thing about this piece was that after creating it um, during okay so during the time we were creating it um, we got our diagnosis which which was very bleak very very bleak um, our chances are negligible on a natural conception status um, it's it would be a complete miracle. So I was basically painting what I believed for and what I'm believing for still to this day. You notice that the shape of the spiral coming off the flower towards the woman is the same like shape that a little fetus would be, like a very early fetus in the womb. It's like the head and then it goes up and then this is like the, the tailbone. And you know, they look a little alien when they're so little, but um, I was like, whoa, that wasn't like on purpose. And you notice right here, the moon would be like the heart beating and just believing for that conception and believing for the impossible. And so to me, that painting is the most precious to me because it's me standing in faith and even, you know, it's acknowledging what I'm going through, but it's also just believing for the miracle. And um, so yeah, that's, that's expectancy. After that, you know, the intensity grew because the journey became so incredibly hard. I was, um, I did find support through different places, but I didn't feel like it was maybe enough. And that's when it led into the season of creating this painting. This to this day is my largest piece. Its title is Spoken. This painting was honestly just like getting out those emotions and feelings because things were boiling, boiling up so strong in my spirit that of the just so much pain, just so much longing, just gr honestly grieving those children. I know a lot of people don't always think about it that way, but to me, um, infertility has been a death, absolutely a death of my children and um, so for me, this painting was, you know, I was creating it and I used it several ways to just express like where I was at. The, you know, the, like I said, the intensity of the emotions were just so strong. There was one time where, you know, the pain was so deep that I, um, I just had this strong urge to just shave my head, my hair. Yeah, I just wanted to shave my hair off. And um, I don't, I don't know about you guys, but for me, my hair represents um, a lot. It's it's like my femininity. It makes me feel beautiful. Like I love my hair. It's um, something that I've always just like. I you know I, in logical mind, I wouldn't ever not want my hair. It's like, but it was from this place of just so much pain and like I just wanted it gone. But I knew deep down that if I did, I would probably regret it because it would start growing out funny and you know whatnot. So. Um, Instead of actually taking off my hair, I uh, go downstairs and, and this girl, I go ahead and shave her hair. <laughs> so this painting saved my hair. And um... Hey guys, I also wanted to add in that during this very dark time of grief, I felt so near to God. He was so present, even though I was struggling very deeply. I just want to read the scripture, Psalm 34, 18 and 19, uh, which says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. The righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to rescue each time. 
And I just wanted to add that in to just say that even in these times, God is so near and he hasn't left me just to fend. He's with me. He's, he was with me through all of this. Thank you. I know it's kind of might be hard for some to grasp. Um, I wasn't crazy psychological problems, but to me it was just grief. And I accept that about myself that, you know, that's where I was at and I'm not going to judge myself about it. And so, yeah, so after that, I continue making the painting. I just create these, these intensities, these tessellated shapes in the sky, like kind of think underwater, just beautiful lighting. And these flowers represent, lilies represent like grief. And so I was putting those lilies in. And then I was also, you know, I put the moon in there to represent just like believing for that life and, and a heartbeat and all of that. And then by the end, you know, I had this swirl I wanted to do. And I kept on making it. I think originally I did it like red. And to me, like the red was going to be representing, I don't know, like blood or, or just something like, I was trying to, I was trying to demonstrate grief. And I got to this, this point where I just had so much in me of just so much boiling up that I literally just needed to like get it all out. I just needed to get it all out. And so I got to this point where um, I uh, had like, I did, I, I went and I sat in my car up on a hill and I just started pouring my heart out to God unfiltered, just sharing my true feelings, like cussing and all. And um, you know, that's some, it seems kind of like I'm working the docs or something like you don't do that in prayers, but absolutely you do that in prayers. God wants to know that. God wants to see where you're actually at and he wants, like he cares so deeply. So I did that, I, I got it out and it honestly like relieved me. It lifted me up from that pain and the pain started like pouring out of me, like going to God, like going. And he just took that pain. He says, cast your cares upon me for I care for you. You know, my burden is light, my yoke is easy. And so I was just taking that on and just recognizing that like I could just release that to God and I could speak it. And so this painting is titled Spoken for that reason. And uh, you know, after that, the years just kind of kept going on. Let's see, so the next one would be this one, but jumping ahead quite a few years, you know, I just continued the journey. It was long, it was it was heartbreaking and you know, ups and downs and just continuing to, to pray and journal and just talk to God and all of that. Um, but it wasn't until, you know, I, I made the next painting was like actually like a year ago or so. And this painting is titled Surrender. So I got to a point where I, um, we, okay, so I just preface this by, I believe that as Christians, we're, we're called to surrender our entirety to God. Everything. Our, obviously surrender our sin and, and get rid, you know, turn away from that and, and surrender our, you know, those, those things. But also he calls us to surrender the good things, the longings, those, those, those beautiful things that we, we want to hold on to. Cause like, you know, it's so easy to be like, oh, I want to just like hold on to these good things in life. But he calls us to surrender even those good things. And so for me, this painting was, was about surrendering my longing of motherhood to God and beginning to, you know, or I was always trying to surrender, but this was a time when I, you know, I heard someone else's testimony where they surrendered something so incredibly hard, where it resulted in them being basically alone. And I just really, it really resonated with me. And it just got me thinking, you know, like even motherhood, even this good longing that God gave me is not something I'm meant to hold and cling to. And this is mine. And, and but um, God called me to loosen my grip called me to loosen my grip and so from that you have uh this painting where the woman is lifted from that pain she she might have been like drowning in the water surrounded by all the people with blooming flowers aka children <laughs> she's um lifted from that and even though her flower is not bloomed and she doesn't yet have babies she's free and she's released and you know we don't have to have our miracle in order to find that freedom i believe i strongly believe that we can we can be free we can be free before that by surrendering everything to god everything you know i just kind of wanted to show with the colors again time passing by with the moon cycles but i wanted to show you know that these colors of just like lightness and, fr and just like freedom Hey guys, so I actually made a poem for this painting as well that I wanted to share. This poem is 
basically a montage of the different stages of grief that I went through during this journey and getting to that place of acceptance. So I'm going to go ahead and read that to you now. This poem is called Accept This Just Can't Be. Hope, pray more, only surrounded, always reminded, alone. Am I alone? This just can't be. There must be a purpose. I feel myself sinking. Stop! I can't breathe. This just can't be. Let me out. Bring me to Zion. I can't go on trying. Then I see the lion. One day, two days, I count every day. I change. Renegade. That's not me. It just can't be. So I fight. One step, two steps, so I walk. Where's the end? Where's the light? Deny? No, I can't. Then I surrender. Gasp for air. I start to breathe. Could it be? I see the light. Time seems more slight. I drift back and forth, swift each movement closer. I start to arise, close my eyes. I accept just as I was, I melt into rest. Thank you. And then there was this moment in my journey where I just longed to see a lion, which is kind of random, but I like desperately needed to see a male lion, like with the, the mane, and um, because to me that male lion represents Jesus and that he's there with me. And um, I went to the zoo one day and it was the moment like right when we got like our diagnosis the same day and it was such a hard day. And I remember going to the zoo and I, I just wanted to see the lions, but of course they're sleeping in the middle of the, of the meadow place. And um, they're all, you know, they're just vibing. And, and, um, and I remember feeling kind of like, wow, like I, I really want to see the lion today and just kind of believing for that, but wasn't sure if I was going to because the, the zoo was going to close at 6 and it was like 5.30. And then I start to hear the roar of the lion. The male lion started roaring and echoing the zoo. Chills went through my body. I went and I went straight to the lion and there's just this big glass a window where you could view them. I go there and the lion is pacing back and forth right in front of the window. So I go right up to the window, standing right next to this bean. I make eye contact. It literally was life changing in that moment. I felt hope. The lion is awake. Jesus is awake. He's alive and he's roaring. You know, I talked about that in, in the poem I wrote for this painting and how I saw the lion and, and it, you know, I knew that there was hope and I knew that there was, you know, possibilities there. Yeah, so that's, um, that's a story with surrender. And then where does that leave me now? Um, we're still in the journey. We still don't have our miracle. We still don't have our pretty bow on top of our story. Okay, so I thought this would be a good spot to add in that we actually have had a miracle, not a mir miraculous conception, but we applied and we got a, an award for infertility treatments. Um, the treatments that we need in order to uh, have a child are astronomical in cost. So we, you know, we applied and we, we got, we were selected out of a handful of pr um, applicants. So praise God, praise God for that. Thank you, Lord. But that leaves me to this place. I have come to a pretty strong place of like peace and acceptance of the situation. I still have a lot of struggles. I still have, you know, just like it's hard and all of that. I I really just got to a place where we, well, first off, we're finally wanting to do something about it and look into treatments and but it's kind of terrifying. It's kind of like you don't, I don't know what it's going to result in because, you know, because the diagnosis is so, so bleak, I don't know if it's going to result in a baby and it's, it's kind of terrifying to like go and put yourself out there with like, and the cost and the, all of it. And it's just so incredibly stressful. So I wanted to portray this woman just having a sense of like reflective and calm and 
and you know at ease and I wanted her she's in this cave she's in this like maze basically and um, she's trying to figure out what to do you notice there's like these different ledges and she's on one of them and if you notice there's not really anywhere to go from there and I don't know how she got there but she's on the ledge she could stay there she's grounded her feet are solid but that's not she doesn't really have anywhere to she's kind of stuck that's kind of how I I felt and I felt incredibly stuck like this is just there's not really very much like I don't know how to get out of the situation it's really a god level problem like I can't like we like, there's certain things that we literally just don't have control over but there are times where we're called to step and we're called to step out in faith um so this t this painting is titled one step to possible one step shortened version version um, and you notice, you know, she has a choice. She can step off the ledge and she doesn't know where she's gonna land or if she's gonna land or if she's gonna survive the, the fall, you know, but but she might also glide. She might actually, she might, it might, it's possible. Like the, the options are possible. So yeah, I just wanted to portray also just her, just her as a warrior, but still, you know, feminine and all of that. I wanted her to have her sword drawn, which represents, you know, the, the um, sword of the spirit, the Bible, the word of God. Just, you know, portraying that she's in this position, but she's gonna make a decision and she, she's, what's she gonna do? And that's kind of where we're at. Yeah, so I've wanted to share these paintings for so long, but I've been honestly kind of scared because um, infertility is still to this day, for some reason, kind of stigmatized. People just have these perceptions. I just want to help shake that away because my husband and I, we're just normal people. We're not perfect, but um, you know, we're just, we just found ourselves in this position. And honestly, I believe it's just like a result of the fall of man. We're in this world where sin entered the world through um, Adam and Eve disobeying God. And then it, it entered, you know, this, this state of problems happen, you know? Sometimes problems happen because of our own choices, but other times they just happen because we live in this world. And I just want to say, if you haven't accepted Jesus into your life, he wants to have a relationship with you and he wants to walk with you through thick and thin. I think of the, the uh, poem, footprint poem, where it talks about when we can't walk anymore, Jesus will carry us. Jesus loves you so much that he died for your sins on a cross. Isaiah 53, 5 says, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. And this is your invitation for anyone who hasn't accepted Jesus into your life. Talk to him, invite him in, and he'll come and dine with you. Repent and turn from your old ways and become new. He loves you and I just wanted to just wanted to share that uh, yeah so I really strongly just believe that beauty will come no matter what our final you know it's all about the journey but um I don't know where our final destination is gonna be I don't know if we'll ever have children but I'm believing that something beautiful will come. I'm just standing in faith. I'm standing in faith for that. My husband and I, and we pray and we're doing all we can on our own, on our end, which is basically very, very little. And yeah, I yeah, I think it's also kind of special to be for me to be able to share before, you know, we do have our miracle so that people can know like, you know, the, the real story. It's, it's not easy always to build a family. It's not like the movies portray or anything like that. So yeah, um, but not to be freaked out if you wanna <laughs> go ahead and try. Um, although it actually has increased a lot. I think um, infertility is about one in six couples now. So it's kind of becoming like an epidemic. <laughs> kind of crazy so hopefully they can also create some more like studies and figure out what what the heck's going on with everything but yeah thank you so much for listening to the end like i'm so honored that you were here i just i just speak um blessings over your life wherever you're at whatever struggles you're going through i just also believe with you for your breakthrough i just want to yeah i just want to pray blessings over you and your life and 
you know, I love you, but Jesus loves you so much. Like he loves you so much. And so just go to him, go to Jesus, go lay your cares upon him for he cares for you. That's, that's everything. That's what I, that's what I wanted to share today. Yeah. Again, just thank you. If you want to follow along more on my journey, I have a YouTube channel, Instagram, Facebook, um, Etsy shop, all of the above. But yeah, I'd love for you to join. Feel free to message me if you're curious about more of my art and more of the stories, because a lot of my paintings have stories behind them. And it just depends on how much I share about them. Yeah, I just love if you want to join along on my art journey and everything. But yeah, have a wonderful day. And